Hello there, welcome to Holy Wiki Recaps. Recaps in which we just don't give quick recaps of movies and series. But also we explain and break down story of movies and TV series in depth. We give detailed explanation and still try our best to keep the length of video short. So you don't get bored. And in today's video we will explain Dune movie. So if you haven't watched this movie, we will recommend you to watch it. Because video is full of spoilers. So with that's it let's begin the explanation. Movie opens with a planet named Arrakis. Arrakis is the most important planet in the entire universe. As Arrakis planet is enriched with an element named Spice. Spice is an element that can be used to enhance technology. It can be used as fuel, healing. For kind of immortality as well, although immortality part was never cleared. But it does have insane healing properties for sure. All the other planets want the spice. Inhabitants of the Arrakis planet are called Freeman. In background we can hear a voice of a girl explaining that how valuable spice is. And for that Arrakis has been ravaged by other planets. And Emperor is behind all of the destruction. Emperor is actually the one who decides which planet to attack. Emperor has ruled the universe for 1000s of years. And just to be clear, Emperor is just a title. Emperors do change. After the discovery of Spice, Emperor ordered House Harkonnen to extract the Spice from Arrakis. Where we can see their cruelty towards the people of Arrakis. But one day House Harkonnen was ordered by Emperor to retrieve, even after winning the war. Why they stopped attack in between. We'll get to that, just keep little bit patience. Plus not all of your questions will be answered in this video. Because even title of the movie itself is Dune Part 1. I will completely break down its Part 1. I won't add extra stuff. Because it will only make things confusing for you. Coming back to a story. Scene shifts to a planet named Kaladin. And Kaladin is actually a homeworld of House Atreides. Where we get to see a boy named Paul Atreides who has woken up from a dream in which he saw a girl. During breakfast, we are introduced with Paul's mother, Lady Jessica. And here I want to clear one thing, that Lady Jessica is a very powerful witch. And due to that Paul possess her mother's abilities. One of their abilities is to manipulate minds of the opponent with their voice just like Alison Hargreaves from the Umbrella Academy. Lady Jessica is teaching Paul how to use his powers effectively. Paul due to dreams of Arrakis is taking interest in Arrakis. As we can see him studying everything about the planet and its habitants. During a meeting with the Imperial Court. We are introduced with Paul's father Leto Atreides. And two new characters. Gurney and Thufin Hawit. Thufin Hawit is a highly trained strategist whose mind has the infinite processing power of a supercomputer. And Gurney is a mentor of Paul, a very skilled fighter. One thing I want to clear is that Lady Jessica and Leto Atreides are not married. Another important detail is that Emperor belongs to the House Carino. The Imperial House Carino is one of the deadliest and grandest house major found within the known universe. And the current Emperor is Shaddon IV. Shaddon IV has ordered House Atreides to take control over the Arrakis. In order to bring peace to the Arrakis. And this was the reason House Harkonnen was ordered by the Emperor to retrieve. As they were causing destruction. During this meeting we are introduced with the member of Bene Gesserit. And you must have guessed by now that Lady Jessica is also a member of Bene Gesserit. The Bene Gesserit are a pseudo-religious organization of all women spies, nuns, scientists, and theologians who use genetic experimentation, galactic political interference, and religious engineering to further their own agenda of ascending the human race with the advent of their chosen one. The Quisits Hatterich. In short you can call them witches. And name of this woman is Mother Gaius Helen Mohiam, and now she is a truth-sayer of the Emperor. Leto Atreides accepts the offer of the Emperor. Because obviously Emperor cannot force a powerful house like Atreides to do something. Therefore they are not just ordering, but they are asking help from Atreides. Leto signs the contract with his royal ring. Scene shifts to the airbase of House Atreides. Where we are introduced with a character named Duncan Idaho. Who is an outstanding pilot and a very skilled swordsman. Duncan with his advanced team will leave for the Arrakis before the royal family. Just to analyze the threats, and also to spy on the Freeman. Paul asks Duncan to take Paul with him, but Duncan refuses to do so. Paul explains his dream to Duncan as well, but he still refuses to take Paul. As Paul is a future of House Atreides. 
which in next scene, Paul explains to his father that what if he does not want be a ruler of House Atreides? What if he wants to be normal? What if he wants to be something else? Where his father replies him that it doesn't matter what Paul will become in future. All he ever wanted Paul is to be his son. After training with Gurney. During night Paul is wakened by his mother. Jessica explains Paul that mother Helen wants to see Paul. She wants to know about Paul's dreams. But before meeting mother Helen. Paul's vitals are checked by Dr. Yuip. Mother Helen subjects Paul to the Gom Jabber. A deadly test to assess its subject's humanity. Which he passes by putting his hand inside a box. One more thing I want to clear is that Jessica was instructed to bear a daughter. As part of the Jesserit's breeding program to create the chosen one, a super being. But for her love for Leto she bore a son, Paul. Which later his mother Helen tells Jessica that so much potential wasted on a male. He wields our power. He had to be tested to the limits. So much potential wasted in a male. Leto, Jessica and Paul travel to Arakeen. The stronghold on Arrakis, which was formerly held by House Harkonnen. On arriving Lady Jessica chooses one of the freemen as her housekeeper. Hands maid, whatever you want to call them. Name of the maid is Shadout, who gives her a Chris knife as a weapon. A Chris knife is a knife whose blade was made from the tooth of a dead sandworm of Arrakis. It is the weapon of choice for the freemen. They also discuss about the Lee Zanal Gabe. Which is the freeman term for an off-world prophet or messiah. Paul while watching documentary about the Arrakis is attacked by a robotic bee also knows as Hunter Seeker. But Paul survives the attack. Leto orders to find all the spies of House Harkonnen. On the other hand on House Harkonnen planet. We get to know that sending House Atreides from their planet Kaladin to Arrakis was part of the betrayal. Yes it was all plan. Emperor is working with Harkonnen. Their plan was to derive Atreides from their powerful full of security planet to Arrakis's dune so they can be executed easily. Mother Helen is also aware of it. Where she tells Baron Vladimir that Lady Jessica and Paul is under their protection. Therefore they must not be harmed. On the other hand Leto and remaining House Atreides members death means nothing to them. Next day, Duncan returns from his mission. As you all know he came on Arrakis before the Paul and his family. Leto negotiates with the Freeman's chieftain Stilger and meets planetologist Dr. Lyot Kynes. Leto learns of the dangers involved in harvesting spice, particularly the giant sandworms that travel under the desert. During a flight with Paul, Halleck, and Kynes, they witness a sandworm attack an active harvester. Leto helps rescue its crew, during which Paul inhales the spice lot in air, causing his visions to intensify. But before the sandworm swallows everything, he is rescued by Gurney. After being treated by Dr. Yue, Jessica asks Paul about his vision. Paul explains that he saw a girl who will stab her with a weapon. Which will be given to him by someone. And it's the same weapon that was given to Jessica by Shadout. The betrayal begins and turns out Dr. Yue is working with Harkonnen. Who disables Arakeen's protective shields and allows the Harkonnen army and disguised Sardaukar troops to overwhelm the Atreides forces. Yue incapacitates Leto as part of a deal to deliver him to the Baron to free his captured wife. Yue replaces one of Leto's teeth with a poison gas capsule to kill the Baron. Which means Yue knows that Baron is a monster. And trusting him may not end well. That's why he is prepared. As depicted when Yue asks Baron to release his wife after delivering the Duke. He finds that his wife is already dead. Baron kills Yue. Leto releases the poison gas by crushing the poisonous teeth implanted by Yue. Killing the Baron's court, but the Baron is able to evade it but it damages his body a lot. Idaho steals an ornithopter, escaping the assault. But Paul and Jessica are captured to be released into the desert to die. Using the voice, Paul and Jessica overpower and kill their captors. Finding a survival kit left for them by Yue. As like I said Yue just wanted to save his wife. But he was blinded that he couldn't see the truth of Harkonnen. Paul and Jessica spend the night in a tent. Baron being treated from the poisonous gas. Hands over command of Arrakis to his brutish nephew Rabin also known as the Beast. And orders him to sell spice reserves and restart spice production to make up for the enormous expenses incurred during the coup. Paul and Jessica are found by Duncan and Kynes and head to an old research station. Where Jessica, Paul, and Duncan finds that Emperor is involved in this betrayal. They are tracked down by Sardaukar shortly afterwards. Duncan and various freemen sacrifice themselves to allow Jessica, Paul, and Kynes to escape the facility. Paul and Jessica escapes with the help of Ornithopter. 
while Kynes decides to distract them and use Desert to escape them. As Ornithopter can only carry two people, Kynes is attacked by the soldiers. But she deliberately lures a sandworm to devour her and the Sarduiker troops. Paul and Jessica caught up in Storm, where Paul again sees a vision of man, telling him to let the nature do everything. Paul realizes what his vision means. He shuts down the system, allowing Storm to push them out. After surviving the storm, since their ornithopter is damaged, so they will have to walk from here. Paul and Jessica enter the land of worms, where they uses a technique of Freeman to walk in dune, so the sandworm couldn't able to capture their movements. Very close to reaching the land, they are chased by several sandworms. But the sandworms are distracted by the voice. They reach the deep desert and meet the Freeman. Among them Stilgar and also Shawnee. The girl who appeared in Paul's visions. And they are the one who distracted sandworms by producing that low frequency voice. They decide to help Paul but not Jessica, as she is too old to be a fighter. But after seeing their skills they agree to help them both. Freeman tribe member Jamis. Who Paul once saw in his vision protests against the admission of the Jessica without a fair duel. And asks to duel the warrior who will fight for Jessica. Which is actually part of their ritual when they add a member in their group. Paul to protect his mother puts his name and fights Jamis. Paul wins several times but does not kill Jamis. Which Jessica explains that Paul has never killed anyone. But by the end Jamis is killed by Paul in this ritual duel to the death. As to join them one of them must die. Against Jessica's wishes. Paul insists on joining with the Freeman in order to fulfill his father's goal of bringing peace to Arrakis. They all continue their journey. Where Paul and Jessica finds that Freeman can control sand worms. And movie ends here. Now let's answer some questions. And also discuss theories related to Dune Part 1. First let's talk about Paul's dream. Paul had a dream which I didn't discuss during recap. Because I thought it will be better to explain it in the end. Well Paul had a vision in which he saw himself fighting a war alongside people of Arrakis. But in that dream Paul's eyes were blue. And if you don't know. Then let me explain that all Freeman have blue eyes. Maybe Paul will become part of Freeman. Fact is that part 2 is in development as well. So maybe some of our question will be answered there. Next theory is related to Paul's another vision in which he saw himself dying by the hands of Shawnee with a Chris knife. Question is what does that vision means? Well there is no simple answer to this question. But if we put some theories then Paul killed Jamis with Chris knife during duel. And that was the first time Paul killed someone. What if Paul's death vision was about Paul's rebirth as a chosen one? When Paul killed Jamis. He became the chosen one. And that's what his death vision may have predicted. Paul will die. Not physically, but actually character-wise. And his total new character will be reborn as new face of House Atreides and a chosen one, to bring peace to Arrakis. Another question you must be wondering, why Emperor wanted to destroy House Atreides. Complicated answer is that Emperor may have some bigger plans for future. Universe is infinite. Maybe Emperor wanted to conquer the infinity with the help of Spice. Because you should know that Spice can be used as fuel. And if Enhanced can provide enough energy to travel long distances in the universe. And maybe Emperor is building a deadly weapon like Star Wars Death Star. And this is the reason Emperor played a Game of Thrones to wipe House Atreides. Because if Emperor tries to do something in future. House Atreides is one of the most powerful houses to stand against the Emperor. This leads us to our next question. Is Gurney still alive? Well I believe he is still alive. Because we did not clearly saw him dying. And that's the reason I believe he is alive. Overall this was an outstanding movie. But the fact is that his movie is only made for Die Hard Dune Universe fans. And that's the reason people are not giving this movie much attention. Because the movie is mostly viewed by fans. Plus you will have to understand that this is part 1. And part 1's main motive was to develop characters. So yeah without stretching this video long. Let's end it. But if you have some more questions related to Dune part 1. Leave them down in comment section and most important don't forget to like the video and must subscribe to my channel and ring the bell icon to stay notified for my latest recap videos.